Okay, so far we have done uh, crystal growth, we have done diffusion, we have done the integrated circuit lab facilities, what are they? And we also looked into last time the thermal oxidation which was the major activity uh, as far as IIT Bombay microelectronics group is concerned. We keep working on MOS, MOS, MOS or name like that MOS. Okay. So let us look into now further and we have started last time something called lithography and why that is the most important process. Lithography, litho stands for some kind of sculpture or some kind of image 2D or 3D, 3D image or 3D picture uh, 3D material or a statue or anything litho generally made out of some metals or stones or something. So lithography, reprinting what you see on somewhere else is called lithography. Okay. Uh, the major, uh, most of you are, uh, I do not know how nowadays with the cameras available you do not need to do what I am now going to say. When in my, uh, uh, not really childhood, but my when I was young enough, we used to have a camera called a box camera okay. and it used to work also. Uh, black and white, simple pinhole and it used to flash something. So how was it acting? So same process which we do on a photography probably is transferred in the lithography here. Okay. We are trying to take an image and transferring somewhere. Okay. So now this is uh, like in photography what is that you have a film which is coated with some emulsion and uh, you ex that immersion film is inside your camera, you press the shutter, it opens for a while given 10 seconds or lower depends on the resist you have there and as the light shines on the immersion, part of the immersion is converted into, this is normally silver sulphides or silver chlorides which is emulsing plates and uh, silver is, re is reduced to silver and that becomes hard and light cannot pass through silver. Okay. So the way we do it there then when you develop the rest of the uh, emulsion goes away except the silver part and that is the image. So if you are thinking this is the portion where light did not come there, so we say that your human image has come there. Exactly similar procedure, you expose and you develop, you actually have to stabilize, so there is few more things you have to do. So this is a photography which we have been doing ages, the company which actually or the person who actually did this uh, has a name Stanford, he is not same Stanford, a Stanford University man, but he he's, has a world patent for image this and the first photograph he took was a running horse, okay, that fetched him the patent. Okay. So they can imagine what reality could be, okay. still now we are following it, the only difference now we have Instead of an emulsion plate, we have some kind of a pixels uh, which are made of CCDs or some other kinds, diodes or buckets uh, and actually light shines on that. Okay. So whenever light shines or does not shine, something happens on this charge storage or not storage and that is the image it stores and since charge is the one which we can easily recognize in electrical. So one can convert into so much charge 1 and so much not charge zeros. So one can digitize a film picture. Earlier we used to have analog, okay, now we can do digital pixels. So large number of pixels, how many get exposed will decide the size and accuracy of your image. Identical to this what I said is done in lithography. Okay. See word which we used last time was photolithography, e-beam lithography and X-ray beam lithography. Of course, X-rays will never come, probably only will remain in the textbooks. Uh, first, it is very costly and it actually affects the silicon devices. So normally, it is a radiation effect it gives. So normally, X-rays are not preferred and its mask is very difficult. You need a leather mask, it's tough to handle. Uh, there is a fourth one which I did not, uh, ion beam, which may or may not come at all. Okay. However, e-beam lithography and photolithography will continue to work for us. Okay. Uh, we will see both of them uh, even now for the at least 28 nanometer technology nodes or even 22, 
we are still working on photolithography. Now this word is slightly not clear to you, but soon it will be that what is this feature has to do with lithography or photolithography. Uh, if you see a, any light shining through a lens on an in object, so the way it is that normally a convex lens if you are you are keeping a source of the light somewhere closer to your focal point then it will be parallel beam will come if the parallel beam appears it will focus at the focal point. So this simple optics is still known okay and we still use that. So now we say that apart from the lens being what it is it is a refractive index of 1.45 but it has a curvature it has a dia which is coming from a sphere this uh, lens is cut actually. So there is a dia associated with it and there is also a word called radius of curvature. Okay. Now these terms are very popular in optics. Okay. However, we will require some of them if not all of them. There is a word called numerical aperture, there is a word called mean time, mean time functions. There are many terms, Rayleigh's fringes, Fresnel fringes all these optical terms are required because light will behave as it say, it will diffract, it will have astigmatism, it will have all 7 possible aberrations. Now we want to avoid this because smaller the image we want to create, smaller is the aberration I am expecting, is that clear? So sharper image I want and a smaller image I want, that is what the node is asking. You go from 65 to 45, you say 0.7 time I will reduce everything. Now if you reduce the dimension, the image also has to be accurate even at the 0.7 times okay. and you go down further to 45, 32, 22 and maybe 0 later. Now this progression of technology node essentially depends on how good is your lithography. The word which we use often there is resolution. Okay. So before we start something, I may just show you what is resolution. This is called the smallest pattern which integrated circuit may actually require you to print on silicon. And there is another one very close by and this is separated by some distance s. Let us say this is w, this is length. So I want not only W and L to be transferred as it is, but also I want separation between two patterns also identical, uh, same as if there are multiple such patterns, they should be separated identically everywhere by same amount and W bar should remain constant throughout for each of patterns. This is what I am expecting at the end of the day. But if I reduce the dimensions, the problem right now I am getting is this is called resolution separation of two lines or two patterns, this is called resolution. How good you can resolve two lines, how close you can bring, they still remain two separate lines, uh, this is called resolution. So one of the major feature of lithography is how to improve or how to get at least the available resolutions. Because an integrated circuit these days you may have 1 billion transistors on a 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter chip or maybe slightly less 2 by 1.5, 3 square mm, 3 square centimeters. Now 1 billion transistors will require huge number of interconnects, huge number of transistor areas and they will have a smaller patterns everywhere. In general, the digital designers, um, you, sorry, the designers actually provide the output of a VLSI design course is these patterns. Okay. This is what we actually design there from the circuit simulation, from the system simulation to RTL to VHDL to finally to circuit simulations and layouts. The layout is the one which is your last output which is called the pattern generations. Once the patterns are available, you transfer all of it and you transfer it, the word is called tape out. So you actually create the patterns on it. Actually earlier used to have MAC tapes and since you used to send the MAC tapes to a five house, so we used to call it tape out. Now no one sends it, it is a GDS transfer data even on the internet okay. and therefore there is no necessity of sending CDs or DVDs or tape or anything, the data is just transferred. Okay. Now this essentially is what called tape out for a company. If you go to any company which has a design company. 
then generally a whiteboard or right nowadays there are screens like this better companies and they will keep showing how many projects they are and for each of them they will have a tape out date. All engineers can go like here 120 do not 124 never show up it is ok there also no one forces you to come. But that tape out date cannot be missed our NSM exam date cannot be changed ok same way ok. So, that you come any time then 24 hours does not matter at the end of the day group must give you the tape out. And there has to be a lot of verification and a lot of designs goes on. So, this is what essentially we are trying to emulate here. That tape out if we have to create, I must create patterns. For example, uh, I do not know we do not have colors in VLSI normally the layout are actually explained through colors because each a, each layer like diffusion implant or poly or each are given some color so that I can actually do what I really want to show. So, for example, if this is my P region diffusion done which are my source drain diffusion may be P plus and if I intersect this by a poly which is not this is normally green and this is normally red. So, if you have a layout editor somewhere on a screen you can see a pink line or pink this intersecting the this. Now, this is a transistor this is your gate this is a source and this is a drain or source drain are identical then it can be S and D. Now, this is the one can say the pattern which you are seeing is essentially plan, but what goes into silicon is something like this maybe I should show you a little differently. This is my source drain and this is my oxide and this is my gate. Let us say this is n ok this is n substrate p plus p plus this is also p plus. So, if you see a cross section in a wafer I see a transistor in this, but if you look at the plan then you can see this poly which is the gate and maybe here is a metal for source drain, but right now I am not showing. So, corresponding to this there will be a diffusion term a diffusion line which is from here to here and which is intersected by oh sorry I changed the color but does not matter uh, for this. This is my source drain this is my channel length and this is my channel width rather it should be other way lengths are normally smaller compared to widths. So, this is the plan and this is the cross section and nowadays since electrical engineers do not learn drawings. So, they may have some problems, but one can still visualize ok. So, mechanical drawing was a compulsory course in all BTEC programs earlier now of course, even mechanical do not have. So, why should we have ok. So, yeah, interesting things are happening they say everything can be done by simulation. So, why do it? You cannot simulate your food inside if that can be done that is everything is solved you have to still earn money to cook food eat food do everything which is reality. But when it comes to doing something you say you oh, can always done by simulation. So, if simulation works for everything then it would have been ok, but it is not true. So, let us learn what is reality. So, if this is the plan which these are two masks in fact this is one mask and this is the other mask mask means selective area poly selective area diffusions or implants are essentially possible if I protect one area and do the other process. Therefore, these are called patterns which acts like a mask for the other process. So, a designer essentially when he finds out W by L through circuit simulation or many other simulations all that he gives me W by L's ok. Then if I want to interconnect I open a window somewhere here in the source drain I can open a window I can open a window and gate and then metal can run. So, another mask will be required ok. So, if I had to do selective area processing I, I must generate patterns which are masks for next step. Now, this is what designer will give me this is what 
technology has to do. Is that clear? So, what are we expecting? Whatever designers have done should get transferred on silicon as it is because you have used that simulations, law of simulations to arrive at this value for circuit performance. You say I want this much speed, I want this noise margin, I want this fan outs. You have designed everything on that basis and now you say okay each transistor has these W by L, these are the connections and this acts like a circuit. The process has to follow what it is. Okay. If follow, if process cannot follow then this circuit performance will be different from what you designed and this may happen. So what will you do? We will see the actually before actually committing on silicon. Uh, what we do is whatever pattern we create interconnect for all of them, we extract back the circuit. From the patterns we actually create the circuit back and re-simulate. And if the initial simulation result do not match with extracted one, we tweak our circuit data and again keep doing till this within the results extracted result is same as starting result, starting data. Now this is then transferred to silicon. You thought, oh, simulation has been performed, back extraction has been done, so it should work. No, that is only the computer added tool has shown it will work. When it comes to silicon, it does not behave the way you wish it. So how does this technology people tell designers that, okay, unless you follow certain rules, I cannot guarantee what you are saying I can transfer. These are called design rules. Okay, that is what technology people give their constraints and these are available to designers to follow during their pattern generations. If you follow them, then hopefully silicon people will say, okay, I can now make circuit to your spec possibly. Okay, there may be still errors, maybe one more turnaround may be required before I get out of everything, but that is the cost involved. Okay. So please remember what is the overall procedure we are looking into and since we are from design to patterns, we are trying to transfer, this transfer is the major uh, activity in whole integrated circuits. Typically a CMOS process may require as many as 16 mask minimum which is what Plummer and uh, Griffin's book has shown but may require 24 to 32 masks depending on additional features you are creating. Okay. So these many masks, so what is the problem? You can see from here this pattern of say gate and this diffusion area there has a limit which will come how much distance minimum you should keep, how much is the edge, edge to edge you should keep, these are design rules. But when you really transfer them, they do not follow equivalent rules. Okay. So how good they follow and how much is tolerance you have which is acceptable. Okay. This is what we are really looking into process that how much tolerance I should have. Now the problem is alignment. There will not be a single transistor, there will be million such transistors. For example, these are something. So I want to open a window here, I want to open a window here and there are n such everywhere. But these second mass should get inside on the last pattern. Okay. This is called mask alignment. So we are worried about the first mask I print, so one image I can see. When I print the second mask for the second process, I must see that the next pattern sits where I expect on all the million transistors or billion transistors on chip. Okay. And there will be on a wafer hundreds of such chips. So each such chip will have each such billion transistor, each everywhere the six that those patterns should sit inside. That is called mask alignment. So you need a mask alignment system in which you can create multiple chips at a time. That is what because cost goes by number of good chips available per wafer and therefore one has to make the reliability so strong, yield is so high that you can make some money. Okay. The typical lab as I said you for uh, this 14 nanometer lab has cost 6 billion dollars to Intel recently last year and uh, even now it is not over, they are still trying to make up EUV systems which may cost another billion dollars. So it may, you can imagine how much money they will pump to just go to a process which will have 11 nanometer circuits. Why do I, they are looking for 11? Because they feel if I can pack more transistors on a chip, 
larger systems I can build and a larger system more likely to work better than the distances apart reliability wise and therefore more money I can generate. So that is the investment because you are going to buy uh, all kinds of electronics in next many years and that is their whole hope that every 10th day iPhone should be iPhone 6, 7, 8, 9 because if that happens and you keep buying only then the Apple will survive otherwise Apple will be bound up in no time okay. Apple has invested so much money uh, it will not be there if you do not change the phone you do not stand in the line in the night whole night to get iPhone 6 God knows why but that is what people do okay. okay so is that uh, introduction clear what is that we are planning and what is that our effort is and why are we are so much worried about transfer of images on silicon okay. So selective area is all that I am processing I am looking for and uh, maybe one figure I first show you and then maybe I will show you the actual something I will show you. So for example, okay this is lithography. This is very simple CMOS transistor. Uh, the way we start is we start with a P substrate. This is uh, to avoid this I have made it three dimension even books gives it so it is not very novel or something. This is three dimensional figures so please remember mass transistor is a 3D device okay. Though patterns are 2Ds but in reality they are 3D devices. So normally what do we say it this is length x maybe this is uh, sorry this is x this is y and this is z. So all three dimensions are required to actually model, model a mass transistor. Then we do a lot of physics we say okay one is longer than the other so in electric field is die down after some time. So we use two dimensions okay but that is only a matter of decisions okay. okay so what we do is we start with a P substrate and create two regions one is called N well the other is called P well okay. Now one can say for N transistor N, N, N FET or N mass transistor I need P substrate so it was already available but their dopings are not very much what I wanted with normally I will start with a very low doped vapors and then I will create N well and P well areas to make my P channel and N channel device. So P channel device will come in the N well and N channel device will come into the P well. Now these two are normally implant regions. So one process we will do is next time after lithography is implants. Now one can see there is a thick oxide shown here some interesting features of oxide which I did not do last time. I thought maybe processing time I will show you how this upper lower thicker oxides are grown okay very interesting uh, method this is called local oxidation of silicon so we will see that. So we need now first mask to create this must be in which P well will be opened area where P diffusion will implant will go at that time all other regions should be protected is that clear when I am making a P well I must close all and sorry I am making N well I must shut every other region so that impurities other than N type can not go anywhere. So first mask should be to well mask okay N well mask. Then I will put another mask which can be a very interesting thing we do it it is called minus mask whatever N well mask I can use N well minus mask which is complementary mask for that and I will use that so it will open P well but rest of the areas will block. So we would say N well is blocked and I get P wells. Once I make P well I will again block N areas and actually do gate first. I can do gate both side together. So this thin oxide I must open windows or I must put some way thin gate oxide on both regions to make gate for both N channel and P channel. Then I will, I will deposit poly. So I will restrict poly only on the gate the rest area poly should go away okay. Then I will implant source drain so when I am doing for N, N, uh, N type transistor I will do say arsenic or phosphorus and at that time this area must get blocked okay. Only N should come here when I will do P well uh, P channel device this area should be blocked and only P impurities be, be allowed in. 
So there will be two masks just for making source drains. Okay. Same will be diffusions on polys as we do. Okay. Then we require contact, so we must open contact to source drain, source drain, also to poly somewhere. We'll show you. So we need contact opening where silicon will be made available for metal to connect. But the way I will deposit metal, it will go everywhere again. The process is universal. I cannot say selective deposition is very different. So I will deposit everywhere and selectively etch the rest, which is I do not want. Okay. That is called mask. So rest area should get etched and some areas do not get etched is what mask will allow you. Is that clear? So then I can open windows here, here, here. I will put metal on this and etch out metals from the contact this regions one metal here one metal here one metal here and these two metal may connect to each other and I will form a C mass. Now the way we do it in general for every process step there is a resist sitting on a wafer okay there is a resist now what is a resist is the word which we are photo resist as the word for photolithography we will use. Now this is the mask from the mask patterns this is the image which is sitting on the resist layer. Let us say some patterns are sitting on the resist layer. But this image must transfer below through the resist thickness. Is that point clear? There is a thick layer of resist. The patterns are sitting here because your mask is sitting here. Now this light may pass through and allow on the top surface this image to be transferred. But I want all the way it goes to full thickness of the resist. And whatever dimensions I had there should remain as deep I go down. Okay. This is the actual challenge for lithography. The image at the surface of a resist is called aerial image. So from aerial image to silicon image, it should be as good as possible. And there are many problems in the resist when it does not allow aerial image. To, firstly, it's from the mass to aerial image, there will be some errors. And from aerial image to the silicon image or silicon surface image is even different. Okay. How good you all three match is your expertise and the cost involved on actually making as good. Okay. So this is essentially a lithographic process. So first thing is you must have a pattern which will have some dark and this region. We will show you this little later. And once we shine light, the dark portion light cannot go. The clear portion light will go, some resist will get light, some resist may not get light and once the resist property I will use, some resist get hardened, some resist get softened, we will see that little later. Is that okay? So this lithography is a pattern transfer from circuit simulator to layout, layout to mass plate and a mass plate to actual silicon surface or silicon whatever the layer actually we have okay this is a image transferring and there are so many places where things may not work to your advantage so the tricks of the trade in design i mean process is how good you match all of it okay and the cost keeps increasing how better you try to do it okay now this is an issue which uh, probably has been bugging uh, gordon moore since ages what Gordon Moore thought that lithography will always match my thinking, which probably it did for a while, many years actually. And he said, okay, 0.7 times the dimension will reduce. So lithography should be able to resolve at least 0.7 times whatever value earlier. And therefore, I can print the same what earlier I was doing, 0.7 times that I can still print. Next time, I will come another generation, I say 0.7 times. So lithography should keep pace with whatever Moore was thinking. Okay. Moore has always thought ahead 40-50 years, okay. but lithography could not match initially okay. because that is was the crux of the problem that lithography could not match Moore's this. Then he said two every two years, then he said every three years, now he may say every five years. Okay. He is still surviving so can do another Moore's fifth law. Okay. So this tricks have been become because lithography was becoming a bottleneck at the end of the day. Okay. So you are talking of say 7 nanometer process. Any optic 7 nanometer is 17 Armstrong, 70 Armstrongs. The smallest wavelengths of a light which you can use 
even if you are deep ultraviolet as you say maybe 1000 Armstrongs okay, or 500 Armstrongs. But you are talking of something now 40 nanometers, 70 nanometers, uh, 7 nanometers, 70 and strong. So the wavelength of the light is certainly much larger than the dimensions you are now looking for. So all kinds of optical errors will come because you are trying to resolve a line, two lines or dimension of each line to be same with a light which is orders higher in their wavelengths. But then the human mind is very great. There are number of lithography techniques which probably still matched it and we still will show you a graph at the end or uh, maybe here itself if I have to show you that okay before I show this where is my I do not know I do not have maybe but so okay. So this wavelength of the light was a major crux, okay, how small you can go. So the 7 nanometer, I would have expected 3 nanometer lines. So the accuracy is great. But 3 nanometer, 30 Armstrong, there is no light actually, okay. Or even 70 nanometer, 70 Armstrong is a, so what we thought then that the wavelength is proportional to HC by lambda is essentially energy, is that correct? If you are talking of photons, yeah, this is photon energy. So why restrict photons? I say I use electrons, which has little higher mass okay, compared to photon. Photon has no mass. So I say, okay, I will use electron beams, okay. Then my wavelength can reduce because there is a mass involved now with electrons. So I will be able to create higher energies and therefore lower wavelengths. So electron beams could be lower wavelengths than normal light photon wavelengths. Okay. So the lithography which changed over was from photolithography to electron beam lithography. If you further want to reduce this, you must have mass higher. So you make ions for example, which are a higher mass. So then high energy ion beams can have even lower wavelengths, much lower wavelengths. And since they will have much lower wavelengths, I can resolve even better lines. But X-rays with heavy mass will also impinge on silicon atoms of similar size and will remove from their uh, position itself and create lot of mess in the circuit. So X-ray lithography is all, I mean this uh, ion beam lithography was thought and then given up. Okay. It is not that it is impossible. Now we are looking for what we call plaza, plasma immersion something and we will maybe time permitting I will show what is the current trend people are trying. Uh, there are also interesting word we will use la these days. One is the, uh, there is a word which will come in optics called numerical aperture and one cannot improve numerical aperture so you put everything in water okay, to improve your numerical aperture. So it is called immersion lithography. Then you do multiple uh, lithographies. So you can see one here, one here, one. Some combination of lithography techniques, I mean multiple exposures can create patterns of much smaller. So there are multiple prints, phase prints, immersion lithography, all these are techniques which will, uh, will not do so much detail, but that is what 2012 onwards is now looking into. The problem is many of them are not successful and now the ultimate what we are looking for is extreme UV lights. Okay. Extreme is typically I am looking for 10 nanometer wavelength uh, UVs and uh, 100 Armstrongs are kind of that and uh, the machine may cost a billion dollars and so far not a single company is successful in manufacturing defect free EV, I mean uh, Intel is trying, uh, Lemar is trying, even IBM has started given up. It's very huge cost and very little returns at the end, okay. Because how many people will really require 7 nanometer chips? That's also a market issue, okay. Should I invest so much that the microprocessor market will bump? And if it does not, then what will happen? This money will go west, okay. So companies always worry about how much is the market available, so how much investment. One CEO does a mischief and the company goes fat and 100,000 people are removed. Okay. That is the way industries work. Okay. So 
please do remember that your job is always at the uh, chopping block any day any company can release 1000 people in a day okay that's called pink slip aapke hath mein gaming is one area where actually technology is not very highly required uh, in most games we use excess speeds okay you are looking for high speeds uh, there are methods of improving high speed without actually doing great lithography but uh, you can do paralleling you can do uh, pipelining you can do many games in the gaming itself okay so uh, yeah i mean human mind is always thinking different which is good okay now what is lithography looks like here is a figure taken from semtech semtech is a combination of a, it's a company which is funded by many companies including ibm and many others texas and they do research and uh, those who are the participant in semtech program if the technology is developed by semtech it is given to every one of them of course no free of cost because they are already invested so in a way free of cost back so these semtech companies are very important people who actually keep developing newer technologies and they get funding from variety of companies uh, and they patent them for only those companies okay so you can see from here the way it is uh, i will i'll come back this to again uh, there is a exposure of light there is a master pattern which is called radical radical is a uh, image which is 4x 5x time the real actual dimension you are looking for so x is the actual dimension 4x 5x earlier in my time we used to have 10x size so we used to call radical as 10x now it is 4x or 5x so one only one transistor pattern only is first taken and then repeated n times wherever i is called step and repeat we will see that then this is done through an optics assay this pattern is transferred here through a resist okay and uh, one can these are the number of mass you can see there are seven mass steps shown here in which patterns are getting aligned one over the other okay if you want to see a simple thing you actually coat a photo resist on a wafer let us say i want to develop this image so i have a mask which has only this much pattern and i shine light light doesn't go through this area wherever the mask is kept and the other is exposed to light the so resist becomes soft wherever light shines the resist remains hard wherever light doesn't shine it's a positive photo resist and in that case the etching of the rest area is possible because the hard resist doesn't etch we'll come back to it so you keep transferring images one after the other over this using mask okay this is essentially lithography take and you can say as i say these are only seven mass process shown here typical n mass minimum requirement is four mass to six mass generally six mass even in four i can make an n channel device okay uh, i i cannot make a p channel device in uh, four mass maybe i'll need fifth mass but typical mass set required now maybe as high as 16 minimum for c mass and can be as large as 36 mass for some special requirements okay the actual dimension of the image which i showed you sorry let's say this is the dimension so i'll expand this 4x times four times and i'll put that as a pattern and when i reduce it i'll get x below is that correct i start with a radical which is earlier it used to be 10 times now it is only four or five times so it's called radical so this is called radical okay now radical is larger version of a pattern whatever you want to finally okay so it may be five times that the reason is because light uh, there will be a optics problem so we first start with a bigger dimension and using lens system i reduce it down to a actual dimensions is that clear is that clear so this is reduction okay the so first is a reduction second is repeat we'll see that how to do it it's called step and repeat okay we'll see this word again writing mask 
if you are writing with electron beam you do not need, if you are lighting with mask, uh, if you are doing a uh, optical mask, yes you require uh, 4x reticle, accuracy when the light is required, in the electron beam generally you can directly write, ok, we will see this, ok. You do not confuse it with that is done only on silicon wafer, is that clear? This is mass generation, what we will do is first create an optical mask, I will come to it and that use it on every time on silicon. I am right now creating a pattern on a create a mask itself, okay, and then use that mask to print on silicon, is that clear? Direct writing what he is saying is only done through electron beams and not through optical beams. Yeah, people are tired laser writing, but laser writing can be done for a smaller dimension chips and for a smaller area you can do. If you do repeatedly, it itself gives a lot of errors and heats up the vapors, okay. So those who have worked in a lab, they immediately can guess what can happen. Those who are not probably may not appreciate, but there are issues which are lab issues, okay. Things do not work, then we discard it, okay. So this is at the end of the day, you can see you start with a single pattern and one over the other you keep doing and you get in multiple chips on a single wafer. It can be a array of 20 by 20, it can be array of 100 by 100, depends on the size of the wafer and chip size. If you are 2 a centimeter by 2 centimeter chip, 4 centimeter square, you, even if you are 16 inch wafer, you may not have more than 40 by 40 array, okay. Now this depends on the size of the chip you are using and depend on the wafer size you have, the number of chips per wafer one can decide, okay. Earlier once we used to have 2 mm by 2 mm square. So 4 mm square chips are very small, even an RF amplifier presently which may use 90 nanometer or 0.13 nanometer process may require area 4 mm square. So even now the companies actually sell the cost per mm square, I want to fab it they say okay 4 lakh per mm square or 2 lakh per mm square. But if you talk of a processor that mm square will blow up and then the cost may become in crores, okay, lakhs will not be there. So normally analog RF chips are smaller component chips and they can be actually got fabricated out of individual transistor making and therefore they are mm square based costing, okay. Typical cost which we get it through academic discount is 1 lakh per mm square at either in Germany. Austria rather, Austria microsystems or in Micron or in TSMC which is costlier, okay. So all this process are essentially where processing is done, nowadays has nothing to do with the designers, okay. Once you create your pattern tape, thank you very much, okay. Then the technology people, these are called fab houses or foundries. If you are foundries, you can work for anyone, okay. Anyone who pays, I will give for you. But Many companies, Intel for example, does not believe in giving many of their mask set to any other company. Even TSMC, they gave only Pentium 1 after they have started Pentium 4, okay. So they are not very happy with release of their process to anyone, okay, or release of their data. And therefore, Intel has its own fab. Apple does partly own fab, partly does with Intel. Look at their own competitors. But Intel does not mind because their processor part time, some processor part is made by Intel for them now. Earlier Apple has its own processor, so everything now it is Samsung which is taking it. So every company has a deal with someone who gives cheaper actually buys from them, okay. These are called IPs, so you can buy IPs and make everything. So typically IC processing has to be realized in this that design to practice is not same and how much accuracy you can build is the cost in the process you put, okay. As I said you, the fabs are very costly, extremely costly in fact and unless the product is shelf product, what is shelf, off shelf product? DRAMs, microprocessor, they are general purpose anyone can pick up from the shelf. But if I am making a specific game, I cannot make million games or maybe million at best but I cannot make trillions. The who will buy that because someone else is making it another game like Sony may have its own play workstation and uh, others may also have a box will have on, Microsoft will have another its own one. So now these people will not let them know okay what, what is the processor there. So they may have their own processor designs, processor technologies. 
Sony has its own process labs only for gaming purposes. Okay. TI has uh, this uh, sorry, Toshiba has its own labs, but many Mitsubishi has closed because they are actually tied up with now Toshiba. So many companies which are good fab houses have actually folded because they have no business now to support. Okay. So many companies, Micron has come, Global Foundries have come. But these are the new companies and when they will fold God knows. Okay. okay. So this is typically what IC processing we are looking into. Okay. Is that point clear? So something here, yeah, this is all introduction to why masks are very crucial and mask printing is very relevant in all IC processes. If that does not happen well, every other process is useless. Okay. That is where the failures are actually. Okay. So, how good you transfer patterns is the crux of all the IC manufacturing. Okay. So, if you go to a lithography place in an any fab, it is the cleanest environment which you have to have. For example, typical uh, uh, clean room may have a class 10 or class 1 clean room, but the lithography room should be sub class 1. Okay. Now, that is because any particles you have just now shown the figures. If any particle sits okay, here which is larger than the gap you are putting, this may not allow to resolve that. Okay. So now it either may short depends on the way mask is uh, open or short the surface. Now this is very peculiar of lithography. So when I do mask processing, and mass printing that area is the cleanest area in the whole fab house and at a given time very few people are therefore actually allowed in because as I keep saying if I move in a lab 1 million particles I move, okay. one hand, 1 million. Okay. So I am worried about how much people I should allow in a lithography system. Okay. So that is the cleanest environment and normally since you are locking up wavelengths light exposures. So the light there cannot be white light because it has then all brostellum, all wavelengths available. So it will expose the resist even before you do. So it should normally has a yellow light and some have green lights now. So some particular wavelengths are used which have nothing to do with the resist wavelengths. Okay. And this is the color of that which normally does not expose any resist. White light is the worst because it will expose. White means it has all ultraviolet to deep infrared or uh, large infrared. So everything can be, any kind thing can be exposed out. So the clean room is very crucial and lithography is much more crucial the success. Okay. Okay. So have you, if you have understood what I was ta trying to hit on. Okay. So integrated circuits could only be realized due to the most important process called lithography. And as I say, it can be either any kind of lithography. Litho is transferring image or as it is. Uh, Moore's law was essentially based on improvements in lithography. Improvement uh, roughly and this is something which you have to understand, the one third of the cost of IC manufacture actually goes in lithography. Because 30 masks, 24 masks, so actually the cost is making a mask and successfully putting on a wafer is the major cost. So one third of the cost of a chip or one third of the cost in manufacture actually is attributed to lithography. Okay. Uh, these are the numbers which uh, I do not know the plumber has given but these are the actual numbers from the labs since I have worked in labs I can tell you what a kind of numbers they say. Uh, lithography is the technique of transferring layout patterns on silicon or silicon dioxide or any other surface and allow selective etching as per the pattern. This is what lithography is all about. Is it okay? Basically, I have talked so, so much general today and did nothing. So let us start doing something now. Is that okay, everyone? So there are three issues of lithography. One of course is a mask design. So first is mask has to be available to do something. So I must design the mask. Now design may come from designers or I may come from anywhere but uh, I need a design which mask has to be created. Then second is the mask fabrication. To transfer it to sil uh, process lab I need a mask, fab I have to create mask. So there are companies which only make mask. They do not actually move further processing. 
So, you give the tape and they will generate mask for you okay, and then they will send it to whichever company you wish okay. like SCL, SCL does wafers from outside, masks from outside, chips from outside and sell in SCL's name okay, do regards. Okay. And the last part is a wafer printing, at the end of the day I must transfer that pattern from the mask to wafer, so there are three issues. I already talked about mask design from a circuit performance of an IC we realize all process level mask and they are then used to selective area processing. Layouts are generally given in the GDS format which essentially represent the coordinates of each pattern. There could be 16 and more number of mask patterns before they could be used these patterns are made first on mask plates these are called mask plates. This is of course the designers issue, this is how designers end up their job okay. So I, my job starts from the mask plate, how to create mask okay. So this is VLSI design group, this is sometimes separate group which makes mask or none really same company can do and finally the process of CMOS or any other MOS or any other semiconductor technologies which may or may not come in next 30 years but can be worked okay. Uh, I might have told you earlier also gallium arsenide was a material uh, came with a bang in 1960s okay and there was an effect called gun effect which everyone thought may fetch a Nobel Prize actually and it just uh, what I should say pitted down in next 4, 5, 8 years no one remembers gun now okay and my PAD unfortunately was on gun diode. Why I thought so? Because everyone was telling this is the material of future, gallium arsenide. So I said let us do something and gallium, everyone was talking silicon, I said lower come. Within 6-7 years I realized that gallium arsenide will remain material of future because whenever it will come it will become present and it will go to future okay. So it never came except my students Saha and others may keep telling oh ho gaya sir, ab a gaya. Those are okay. okay, the reason is obvious here. It will take enough time for them to mature a technology which silicon has matured in 70 years. So obviously it is not easy for them to mature a technology up with cost. So I am not trying they will never reach but by the time I do not know whether integrated circuit will survive. Then only by virtual thinking or oh, do this may happen. From a CAD tool use we create layouts and then use back extraction to get circuit schematics, circuit simulations prior and after layout simulations are performed and they should be matched. Further the layouts are to be checked for design rules that is why I brought the sheet because whatever what are design rules I said it are the technology constraints which a designer has to follow during layouts and they must be followed because these are the constraint otherwise at no time designer this can be transferred. These are called design rule checkers, uh, some new layout generators or layout simulators have built in DRC, what does that mean? So if I want to draw a line next to it where it is violating the uh, design rule then it will not allow you to, it will start shouting so it is built in this. But this is not true. In spite of all DRC cleared, the wafer may still have design rule violations. Okay, that's the fun part. Okay, all companies have this issue. DRC ran and chip did not. Okay, so there are the design rule violations. Okay, so I'll show you. I'm not teaching design course. Otherwise, I'll show you how these design violations come in spite of DRC checks. So mass making system uses a microscope like a system which transfers images on photo emulsion plates. Sometimes these photo emulsion plates could be metal plates also we will see them. Uh, these are called hard mask and uh, one single pattern of the circuit needs to be replicated to a large number of chips on the wafer thus we need a system which is called step and repeat. We expose here for the next chip this, for the next chip this okay. So this is called step 
and repeat. So, mask itself is created by process called step down from 5x to x and keep repeating on number of chips you want to make as many mask patterns you must create. Okay. So, this uh, system which is which makes mask is a, already I have shown you one of them, but uh, maybe another figure I may show you hand drawn by me. Is it okay? So, mask are actually created through a step and repeat system or called camera, it is also called a step and repeat camera. We are actually using a camera, slightly better version or microscope sometimes. Okay. Uh, so, many of the lens system which we use there are uh, convex so concave together, parallel plate convex lens. There are many con lenses properties which people have tried to get what? avoiding the aberrations. Okay. So, there are many methods optics allow, uh, you must those who are in optics you know when you try to solve one some other estimation will increase. So, you reduce that the diffraction pattern will airy pattern will increase. So, something happens so minimum of all okay. yes. Yeah, you are right, but that uh, another mask is normally created from the CAD system itself on the pattern which is in the uh, which modulates the beam. Is that clear? No, 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 I, you did not get it. I have an image on the ma uh, on the screen which is coordinates I know. So, I can modulate the source of the light with this areas. What I am trying to say is the following. This is very you are you are great, but of course you can create a mask by electron beam first and then use that ahead. But the way it is, for example, I want to create a mask on this. Let's say this area I want to fill. Okay, so I have an image somewhere in the computer. So when I expose the light, it start doing something like this. It exposes this much. Is that clear? on the emulsion plate itself. Okay. The way I do it is something very interesting. If this is one image, the exposure, uh, okay, 50 percent. I do the next is shifted by 50. So, it overlaps the last image. Though I do not want any gap, light should be everywhere. When I reach the last, for example, this, this is the next scan is 7, 90 percent down and you start exposing again. What is this scan called? Raster. So, the raster scan the image is transferred on the emulsion plate. Okay. You are right. Is that okay? This is what exactly it does. It receives the data from the cat this and actually modulates this light source or electron beam depending on what kind of mask you want to create. Okay. And that through a focusing system can actually expose the whatever emulsion below. Uh, all emulsion this is a quartz plate which is has a emulsion coated. Okay. These emulsions we will see what are those emulsions, but peculiar typically emulsion must receive light and sharp darkens itself. So, when I develop those portions will be retained the others will be etched. Okay. Now, there are if you are using electron beam the deflecting system is electromagnetic you have plates uh, electrostatic plates and magnetic plates. So, I can actually move the electron beam anywhere okay, x and y okay, and therefore can expose exactly where I want. So, electron beam lithography is great because it exposes exactly where you want and to exact uh, dimensions you want because it has a smaller wavelengths. Okay. However, electron beam system is very costly and individual chip if you have to do it expose it, it will for a wafer it may take months. So, it is very costly. So, what we do is we create a mask out of electron beams and use that as an optical mask for further work. Okay. Direct writing is also possible. On the wafer itself, I can like pain, I can write patterns by electron beam. Okay. Some 100 uh, chips are there, 400 chips are there for each pattern. I may actually program it, it will do everything like this for all chips. 
it may take 8 days to do this kind of work, so it is very costly, okay. Whereas uh, what we will do is we will create a mass plate using electron beam possibly for a better features and then use those mass plates for optical lithography, okay. This is what we will be doing. So through this system, a camera system which shown here, a, there can be light or electron beam source, there may be some focusing system. If it is electron beam, it is a electro focusing systems, okay. Electron lenses can be created and we can create focusing, you can have deflecting systems and you can expose lights on the emulsions. I wrote already the step system has 4x or 5x initial pattern is reduced to x in the repeat. Step may as it is we create 5x image, whatever actual pattern size we actually expose 5 times. The accu why we want to do this because accuracy in 5x is more likely to get for the optics, okay. But when I reduce I will have another problem of reduction, so error probably may multiply or may cancel depending on my expertise, okay. Okay, so typical system which we may do repeat system is you may have a source and you have created a mask which is set here, there is a condenser lens, light for example shines through this or electrostatic lens whatever it is, wherever this bar, dark portions are there light does not pass, wherever clear portions light passes through, light passes through here does not pass through here, then you actually uh, there is a reduction lens system which reduces to x dimensions and expose on the buffer, okay. Now this repeat system then I can do a step, step can be done by xy or it can be done by beam itself, beam can be moved from one position to the other, okay. So either it is beam shifts or it is actual xy motor control. Okay, you give a stepper motor, so much steps it will move. Okay. So there are number of ways, initially we used to have mechanical systems, so steppers, nowadays it is all electron beam, so it automatically scans. Okay. So a typical first problem is to create a radical, okay. so we can create radical, so these uh, radicals are first important thing and then they reduce x times for 1 upon 5 times, 1 upon 4 times to x image, okay. Uh, people have tried but there are more errors than uh, higher, okay. You can do it, people have tried. Uh, this is called, uh, this is what multiple imaging was trying, what you are seeing. We are exactly trying on that, okay. Multiple exposures, okay. If you are done implant in your uh, lab right now in your lab you must have seen the number of implants can create any profiles. So same technique was tried uh, but this is not Gaussian and since the patterns are not Gaussian the overlaps are very difficult, okay. that is the problem. Okay. Gaussian everything is fine, variance is known, I know how much peak values are so I can adjust my energies, nothing happens here. Okay, you can look into a variety of books. Uh, this is given very well in the Plummer's book. So there is, a, I hope if at least some of you have Xerox copies of Plummer or Plummer's book itself or some still, still believe this is good enough and may rule at the end, carry ar wo sab nahi tha usme. The first thing in a system uh, which we require to do anything is called light sources. What kind of light source I need? As we scale down the technologies, uh, we are actually going to 7 nanometers now. So we will have a smaller features and uh, one needs shorter wavelength beams, it is obvious two possible sources of lights are used in exposures in lithography. One is called mercury atom beams, the other is electron beams. As I say, X-ray beams, ion beams are still away and hopefully will remain away. For photolithography, light source is normally uh, so much common, you know, this whole are good mercury sources. 
all halogen uh, all these tubes are essentially has a mercury vapors and they act like a source of light which has a wavelength from ultraviolet to not far but little ahead of infrared okay. Uh, if you know the what uh, in the water purifier we were actually shining UVs, it is a simple UV lamp. Okay. The use of this photo lamps has slightly different kind of uh, this along with mercury some catalysts are added to improve the efficiency. Uh, the electron beam lithography is normally like a electron source like a CRT tube cathode ray you actually heat it and electron copious emission of electrons can be generated and then beams can be formed by electrostatic lenses, electron lenses as well as deflecting systems. So it is equivalently done there as well. Now there is a problem which is worrying us. The light sources use lamps which are which has a vapor pressure of the order of 20 to 40 atmospheric pressures. Uh, this since the pressure is very high uh, it creates plasma inside. Plasma means state of ions, electrons, non neutrals together is called plasma. And uh, why we need plasma because I need high intensity beams of light. So I must create plasmas. Now which and this plasma radiates the spectral lights which we are worried we are interested in. Just to give an idea 40,000 degree Kelvin is the plasma electron temperature. The temperature of the actual gas may be room temperature but the electron temperature is as high as 40,000 Kelvins okay. That is why it is called cold system. The energy is so high that increases the KT but it does not increase the environmental or ambient temperatures. So it is cold that is why cathode emits and so this is mercury vapors using a plasma mode you strike the gas and once you strike the gas you create mercury vapors plasmas and these plasmas I repeat has electrons, photons and neutrals and since you are applying it and problem for those who have done B and also have not forgotten basic electrical engineering power area. A jo halogen tube lamp ki a jo tube hai aapki mercury tube mercury vapor lamp ki tube. Is mein ek choke hai aur ek capacitor hai. Strike hota hai uske baad to wahi rata hai to phir kya ho kaise wo kyunki sustaining voltage is 110 strike voltage is much higher therefore you need a choke and a capacitor. So what happens after strike happens uska the impedance ekdam low ho jayega. To wo kya karte hai phir? Socho jara, ye ek serious issue hai aaj tak ke 30 saal ke is mein itne interview mein ye puchha hai mein ne aur 99% people do not know how actually a mercury vapor tube works. Think of it and that is what I would like you to know. Okay, last few minutes. In olden days, whatever mercury vapor lamp we used to use has a 2900 to 4000 UVs available. Okay, we used to use those lamps. Nowadays, we have two spectral lines, uh, UV sources which are two uh, specific spectral lines. One is called G line which has a wavelength of 436 nanometer or 4360 Armstrongs. The other is I line which has lambda of 365 nanometers which is 3650 Armstrongs. Please remember these are standard spectral lines which are used in lithography. Okay. Both these G line and I line uh, sources were useful till we were working on 0.25 micron nodes. 0.25 even 0.18 people have successfully done but below 0.18 or 0.25 these lines are not good enough okay because the dimensions are now smaller than the wavelengths you are actually using in order actually. Okay, so we will see what else alternate to plasma bed UV system one can use lasers okay axiomer lasers with high with a very high very high brightness 
डबल हाई हो गया बट एक ही है टिपिकली इन एक्सीमर लेजर यू हैव आइजर इलेक्ट्रॉन और सम अदर गैस आर्गॉन और नाउ इट इज इवन कैल्शियम फ्लोराइड इज यूज सो क्रिप्टॉन प्लस एन एफ थ्री एंड वेन यू शाइन वेन यू अप्लाई एनर्जी इट फॉर्म्स के आर एफ एंड क्रिप्टॉन फ्लोराइड एक्चुअली रिलीज इज प्रोटॉन्स वेन आइनाइज ओके नाउ क्रिप्टॉन फ्लोराइड गिवज अ वेव लेंथ ऑफ टू फोर्टी एट नैनोमीटर्स ओके सो इट इज गुड फॉर पॉइंट वन थ्री टू पॉइंट टू फाइव माइक्रॉन्स और एज आई से सम पीपुल आर ट्राइड नाइनटी एंड सक्सेसफुली then we went to argon fluorides which has a lambda of 193 nanometers and uh, we are also now looking for fluorides alone crypt argon fluoride is 193 if i use only fluorine then it is 157 nanometers okay. i did not write it but you can write okay maybe i have a figure i'll show you So we started with G line 436, I line 365, then krypton 248, argon 193, which is the most standard line used in all wafer fabrication across the all industries. 193 nanometers. Okay, this is some kind of a sacrosanct number right now. 193. Our effort is to go below. That is why I said uh, ex ex extreme UV. we want to go to 10 nanometers at the end of the day so that the dimensions could be as accurate for 7 nanometers okay so we can write a mask using e beam problem with e beam say something like this you may create a mask but finally you will go on the optics so that the problems of optics will remain okay mask may be accurate If you create an optical mask and use it optically further, it's much more rare. So no more than 0.25 we we actually use optical mask. Below 0.25, you just need uh, electron beam mask, created mask, okay, and then use optically. Okay. Since we are not done that two parts, so I am not telling you. Okay. So please remember, uh, very currently, ये जो material science वाले लोग हैं ना. ये फ्लोरीन और कैल्शियम फ्लोराइड देखो क्या हो सकता है हियर इज फॉर ऑप्टिकल लिथोग्राफी दिस इज व्हाट वी कॉल नॉर्मलाइज्ड डॉलर पर मेगापिक्सल पर आवर फॉर ईयर व्हाट एवर इज अप टू 2010 दे आर शोन सो दैट्स व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इट इज जी लाइन 436 आई लाइन 365 Krypton 248, argon 193, fluoride 157, and calcium fluoride one is believing may go to 112. Okay, so I'm not sure. I'm just numbers I read uh, the other day from some kind of engineering book uh, journal, but uh, one doesn't know. I'm not sure of that number. Okay. So over the years, can you now see this is the Moore's law trying kind of you are trying to reduce and you are trying to match light with wavelengths of that. But you can't do 193 nanometer. Even this 157 is not guaranteed. So you have a light of 1930 Armstrongs or 193 nanometers, and your dimensions are what now? Few nanometers. You are talking of seven nanometers, ten nanometers. The light wavelength is 193 nanometers. So how do I still get resolutions of my choice? Okay, that's trick, and that's most important. optics okay optics has advantages and therefore disadvantages okay so we'll next time when we first we'll look into different photo resist and uh, once we look into photo resist maybe electron beam resist and uh, thoda sa uh, chemistry dikhayenge aapko ki polymer chain resins hote kya hai and everything as i said this is given not exactly as i showed in the plumber's book uh, plumber has many papers in diffusion and and in lithography so his uh, work in the lithography is well known okay stanford has one of the best lithography system in 80s and it has the worst system in 2014 okay they haven't got money so that's it okay okay so 
we stop here today